When a medium is oversaturated by many cliches or styles, it's always nice to find something that sticks out from the rest by using a more unconventional narrative, approaching topics from different perspectives, or just having a more atmospheric design. Today I'll be going back to the year 2004 to talk about Mind Game, a psychological dark comedy film produced by Studio 4OC and written and directed by Misaki Yuasa, one of the most interesting and artistic anime directors of our time, and my personal favorite. So does this film make use of its distinct style? Well, let's take a closer look. My name is Keaton, and welcome to my review of Mind Game. The story focuses on an aspiring mangaka named Nishi, who's in love with his childhood sweetheart named Myan, but due to lacking the courage to commit to her, she sadly became betrothed to someone else. From there, the story gets pretty bizarre. A couple Yakuza show up, one thing leads to another, Nishi has a revelation that I can only describe as morbidly hilarious, and eventually the characters get trapped in a whale where they meet an old man. It's a pretty crazy story, but it's also very metaphorical, tying all these weird events to themes of taking more chances, being more positive, and living life to the fullest. Not exactly complex themes, but it's the way they're conveyed that make them more interesting and fun. To accompany these bizarre events, the tone of the movie shifts to be more comedic and silly. It certainly has its more ambient and quieter moments, and those are done pretty well too, but for the most part the story focuses on being a fun ride about enjoying life however you can, no matter what gets in your way, and I'd say it succeeds for the most part. Similar to the story, most of the characters of the film are fairly simple, but are pretty likable and fun for their energy, and Nishi himself is pretty relatable and entertaining to follow as a protagonist. They're all fleshed out early on, and while it goes by fast, the clever visual storytelling makes it easy to pick up on, and makes the characters very well-rounded. Even so, I can't say any character besides Nishi stuck out to me as anything interesting or memorable, with the exception of one character, who, while I'd love to go into more detail about for how hilarious they are, I wouldn't dare spoil the surprise. There are some things in the film left pretty ambiguous in terms of what they mean, so you may have a different experience or interpretation depending on who you are. It's still easy to follow though, so I wouldn't say it takes much away from the film. There are some scenes in the film that could have been shortened though. While the movie is about 144 minutes, it probably could have easily been 120, so you may catch yourself looking at how much time is left at several points. But I can't say it ever bored me though. The ending of the film is pretty abstract. Without giving anything away, it leaves off on a pretty wonderful message but the weirdness of how it's conveyed may throw some people off, and might not be satisfying for them. But I think it works for what it was trying to say though, and fits with how crazy the story is as well. The visual design of this anime is very expressive and creative, using several different art and animation styles to convey both the mentality of the characters and the emotion behind the things they're doing. Which is probably why the film was called Mind Game to begin with. The visual design itself is pretty minimalistic, a common style by Masaki Uasa, and like his other works, he uses it to great effect, being able to convey a lot of raw emotion through simple movements, expressive designs, and colors that make many scenes in the film a lot more emotionally impactful, in a way only animation could. The film also recognizes that by using animation, you can convey information very quickly, allowing the film to show the backdrops of the characters very fast without it seeming rushed or wasting time with needless exposition. It also loves to use a lot of absurd imagery for random, lowbrow, and dark comedy, and it certainly made for some hilarious moments that added to the fun experience. There are some design choices and scenes that may be a bit too weird and ridiculous for some though, but the more comedic tone the movie goes for makes these moments easier to accept and they're usually entertaining to watch. Of course, the visual design isn't exactly beautiful in a conventional sense, but it certainly was a breath of fresh air and uses its art style to great effect. And I'd argue that's a different kind of beauty, letting the raw passion and emotion behind each design and movement give a very refreshing and lively atmosphere that complements the theme of living life to the fullest. The music was produced by Shinichiro Watanabe and composed by the artists Feirei, Seiichi Yamamoto, and Yoko Kano. It has a nice amount of variety to fit the mood in each scene, and it goes along well with the abstract visuals and story, and I think it's wonderfully done, but I'll let you hear it for yourself. Otherwise, the film has a lot of quieter moments as well where there's no music at all, letting the ambience or just what's happening in the scene carry the emotion and atmosphere, and it works very well. In terms of voice acting, I'd say the actors did a wonderful job. Similar to how the visuals are handled, their performances are pretty over the top at times, which fits the comedic tone of the movie and allows the emotions of the characters to be more apparent and passionate. 
The work the staff put into this show's visual and sound design is nothing short of spectacular. Its style, its animation, its soundtrack, its voice acting all fit so perfectly with the show's writing, and makes it such an entertaining experience. Everyone did an excellent job. This film takes a very simple theme of living life to the fullest and conveys it in such a compelling, memorable, and amusing way through both its narrative and presentation. If you're looking for something more realistic, you might not like this, but there's a real beauty to the raw emotion expressed through the abstract style and writing that you don't really get in more grounded works, and I strongly recommend this movie to anyone who's willing to give something more unorthodox a chance. So what are some of your favorite abstract anime? And if you've seen this film, let me know what you think of it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I'll see you next time.